So I'm sitting in a big luxury sedan. It's even called a limousine. I'm not alone though. I'm here together with the AI robot, Numi. So this is Numi. Hi Numi. Hello. How are you? Thanks for asking. Everything is great here, so glad you asked. In fact, I feel amazing good that you asked. I'm fine and I hope you are fine too. Hi there. What's the weather today? The weather in Vedesta today will be cloudy with a minimum temperature of 2 degrees and maximum temperature of 6 degrees. So this is the Neo ET7, the long range version, which means that it has a battery of 100 kilowatt hours of gross capacity, around 90 when it comes to net capacity. I don't have the exact figure of that. This is a big luxury sedan designed in Munich, Germany. Software is written in California, USA. It's manufactured in China with headquarters in Shanghai. So this is really a multinational company that is trying to do something new on the market. The ET7 measures 5.1 meters in length and has a wheelbase of 3.1 meters. So it is really big. I have a hard time fitting it into my garage. It's really a matter of centimeters. It weighs 2.4 tons, so it's a heavy car. Currently, there's two different battery packs. There is a smaller battery of 75 kilowatt hours and this big battery of 100 kilowatt hours. Uh, that's what you can choose in between. So this car has a VLTP range of 580 kilometers. It has a very low drag coefficient of 0.21, so it's slippery. It has a whooping 653 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. It actually does 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds. I'm gonna try that out in a later video though, so stay tuned for that one. Under the hood, this big luxury sedan actually hides a lot of performance. The purpose of this car is a luxury sedan, a limousine, so it's not a practical pack mule. And you can tell by factors like the back seat is not foldable. You can't utilize more space than you have in the boot. The boot capacity is rather shy. It's only 363 liters. But to compensate for that, this car actually comes with a tow hitch as standard uh, with a towing capacity of two tons. So that's great. The things you can't fit into the boot, it's actually possible to put in a trailer behind the car instead. So that's a good alternative. Now to one of the most interesting things to the NEO, and that's charging. Or is it? The DC capacity is 140 kilowatts. That's rather low. And the AC charging is 11 kilowatts. But there is a thing here. NIO is actually a pioneer as a company. They prefer battery swapping instead of quick charging. And that means that you actually go to a swap station, you replace your empty battery and get a full battery in a matter of minutes instead of fast charging. And this is how the battery swapping works. Just placing the car within the square. So now it will enter the building, the swap station automatically. It is damn cold outside. Windy and two degrees feels like minus five. Now it is in position, parking brake activated. So it's turning off the battery, powering off the, switching off the power, heating up the new battery and authenticating the car. 
so work in progress so how fast is it charging the batteries in the station Yeah. So, uh, the guys at the headquarters who make the decisions. Ah, okay. So. How many stops there are and yeah. So it's depending on uh, the queue and. Basically. Yeah. Because you don't need to charge it as fast if it's not a long queue. Yeah. yeah. So then you spare the batteries. So the first ES7 delivery actually took place three days ago, and he was here yesterday charging. No, something is happening here. He's opening the floor. Securing the car. No, it is going to lift it up. It's time to unbolt and remove the existing battery on the car. Now it's unbolted and moved down. Lowering the car. Closing the floor. And fetching the new battery. Now it's time for the new battery. Charged and ready to go. Fresh 100 kilowatt hours of battery, approximately 700 kilograms. Now it's in place. I'll secure in the car and probably powering up. So it's probably doing some security checks, power checks, before powering on the car. Now. So now it seems to be done. Green? Yeah. The light is green. It is now time to, to leave. So total time, almost nine minutes, 8.46. 8.50 maybe. The ET7 has a starting price of 799,000 Swedish crowns, 70,000 euros. And that's for the base version of 75 kilowatt hours of battery pack. But that price does not include the battery pack itself. So you are only leasing the battery pack. So that's an option to keep the price lower. Uh, this specific car with the 100 kilowatt hours battery costs just above 1 million Swedish crowns and 91,000 euros and that's together with the battery so all inclusive with all equipment and the ET7 always comes fully specced with all the equipment and, and features on all versions, on both versions. The price is actually all inclusive and the only thing you can choose is the battery size and if you want to own the battery or lease the battery. There is also a subscription uh, model that you can choose if you don't want to own your own car. Let's take a look at the interior. This is where this car actually shines the most. It is a luxury interior. It feels like a rolling lounge or a great living room with a lot of matte materials. Nothing is shiny in this car and that's great. Soft touch, leather imitation, Alcantara on top of the dashboard, Alcantara roof and A-pillars. Also Alcantara on top of the door trims and also this uh, leather inlet. Kind of a matte wood finish on the central compartment and also incorporated in the dashboard hidden vents and digital vents for controlling the airflow and everything is very sleekly put together looks good feels good the car is equipped with frameless soft closing doors and as you know 
frameless doors can be very bad sounding when closing them so let's try the door sound once more it is a nice sound by the way you open the door by pressing this big rectangular button here it's very easy and convenient to place because there is kind of a grip here where you put your hand to open the door naturally and therefore your thumb ends up at this position that's a good idea something to complain about is this central armrest it is a bit plasticky and not enough cushions it could be a bit softer a different kind of looking steering wheel it is not that fat as some sport wheels that you have in for instance bmw nice control buttons no haptic touch real buttons like joy joystick like buttons you activate uh, the cruise control or autopilot by pressing the left button you have volume control music control and everything on the steering wheel i mean it is really nice in here the seats are great good support i wouldn't call them sport seats but more classic seats gives you enough support they look good ventilated seats on all four positions massage seats and seat heating on all four positions and this is not your random german massage seats this is chinese massage seats that's it's a whole nother level you really feel the massage through the thickest jacket doesn't matter this one for instance no problem at all it is a real massage you feel it it's great it's not overcrowded with different screens you have a central instrument cluster of 10.2 inch perfectly sized if you ask me in the central you have a media screen that's an amoled screen so great contrast it's 12.8 inch very good position of the screen good height and close to the driver easy to control there is not a lot of buttons i don't miss any button at all i have everything i need on the screen things that i don't want on the screen is perfectly placed on the steering wheel or on the central dashboard for instance the hazard lights lock and unlock button the drive modes and the gear or drive selector the ambient lighting in this car is amazing it's divided into three different zones and the top zone is called the door panel zone it actually goes all around the car and it's on top of the dash and on the door panels then you have the storage zone that's more or less in the middle for instance lights up storage storage zones like the one here in the middle and then you have the low zone the lower zone called floor zone that's actually lighting up your foot wells so you can actually choose to synchronize all the colors between all these zones or individually uh, turn off specific zones or have specific color schemes on uh, specific zones there is also kind of a breeding functionality uh, where you get this classic breeding pulsating light feeling feels like the car is breathing maybe it's numi that's breathing who knows but it's really nice this car is equipped with a really amazing sound system with dolby atmos functionality 3d sound it's 23 different speakers all over the car subwoofers tweeters mid-range speakers bass elements everywhere and it is a great sound so it is time to try the back seat as always i'm sitting behind myself it is strange i know but that's a fact the front seat is adjusted i'm a tall guy 193 centimeters 6.3 foot i mean look at this <laughs> look at the leg room here and as i said this is kind of a limousine the back seat is great uh, there is enough headroom could be a bit more my hair is touching the 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 glass roof you also have a lumbar controller here so we can adjust the lumbar position and now i have a bit of a hard time fitting my shoes 
underneath the front seat but that's because I have the front seat in the lowest position because if I look at the passenger seat that's much higher and as in all electric cars the back seats are lacking support for my ties uh, nothing new uh, and no exception in this case another thing that I miss here in the back seat is actually the possibility to adjust the backrest position no it's fixed you can't adjust it and that's that's sad because you can't even fold the back seat so I don't understand why they didn't implement uh, support for adjusting the back seat position a sophisticated armrest in the middle with uh, a pocket for storing two phones and also a USB-C port in this one and you have two cup holders and a middle screen where you can adjust things like temperature, airflow, seat heating, you can activate or deactivate the massage as in all limousines you should be able to travel good in the back seat one example of that is that you can enter the executive rear seat package which means that you press that button and it actually moves the back seat upwards and front and as you see it is now at the maximum position and I have a lot of room now it's time for some driving experience and drive test and see how this car feels the ET7 has several modes Comfort, Eco, Sport, Sport Plus and Individual or Custom the Custom is exactly as it sounds you can adjust things like acceleration time it starts at 3.8 seconds that's the lowest up to 12.9 uh, you can also adjust the regen level from very low low to standard also the ride height since this car has active air suspension you can lower or raise the ride to uh, after your liking uh, but it, it's only two modes low or standard at least in the dry mode customization then you, there is a higher mode where you can raise it i think it's called terrain mode or snow mode or something like that then it raises the car to the top level you can also adjust the suspension so soft standard and stiff and the steering mode comfort standard and steady uh, and also the climate and that's more or less about uh, energy efficiency so echo or standard so let's start with the comfort mode and that means that the suspension is on soft the steering is also on easy or soft it feels very American the steering is a bit sloppy and very soft it feels like it's a bit of a delay in the steering wheel and the suspension is really leaning it's almost like traveling on some kind of cushioning so let's try over on some rough roads on gravel it actually handles the gravel well it is a silent car this car is currently driving on 19 inch winter wheels Nokian Hakka Pelita R5 studless Nordic uh, winter tires with an extra silencer in it so some kind of acoustic foam inside the wheels or tires to keep the noise level down uh, on summer I think this car is running on 21s so bigger wheels on summer this 19 inch wheels actually adds to the comfort of course the comfort mode when driving on soft suspension and easy steering it is a bit too soft for me uh, it feels like I'm really not in control of the car so let's try another mode echo mode is okay it's a stiffer suspension a bit stiffer steering wheel it feels like it's in the middle or in a sport mode uh, actually feels a lot better than the comfort mode I like this more acceleration is probably 
uh, on the 12.9 seconds, 0 to 100, so it's the highest acceleration mode, slowest I should say, to be more clear. This is the mode I'm going to try when driving and doing the consumption and range test. Stay tuned for that. So I prefer the Echo mode uh, instead of the Comfort mode. The Echo mode feels comfortable enough for me. I mean, I, I'm going to skip the sport mode. I'm going immediately to Sport Plus. I think the, the only difference between sport, sport mode and Sport Plus is the acceleration time. So now it's 3.8 seconds instead of 5.9. Oh, <laughs> it is a powerful car. As I said, it has 653 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. I promise you, you feel that. You feel the push, you feel the punch. It's driving on all wheels. Uh, oh, it is that kind of Tesla feeling. It reminds me of the Model Y performance. It is immediate, it is strong. Let's try another acceleration on Sports Plus mode. Oh, it handles the grip well. Uh, it does spin a little bit. I mean, that's probably due to very soft tires and the weather is around five or six degrees Celsius. Uh, so it's a bit too hot to handle for, for this kind of winter tires. The, the rubber gets very soft, but it is, <laughs> it is a great punch. I mean, you don't need that kind of punch on uh, this kind of a big luxury sedan, but I really like acceleration. For me, at least, it is an exciting and important uh, thing to have. And that's not for bragging, it's more for joy. This is not a sports car. Even on the stiffest level of the suspension, it is a bit too soft it is leaning a little bit too much in the corners uh, and you feel that this car is more trimmed and leaning towards comfort and i understand that but it's still fun to have this power underneath the acceleration pedal great joy so let's try the different region levels uh, i'm starting at very low and see how big the difference is. And at very low, it is, it's almost like a neutral, a bit higher resistance. Let's try on low. I don't know if there is any quick way to change the region level. So I'm doing it through the, the drive mode menu. Uh, so now on low, low region compared to very low, it is a slight difference, not so much. It's still, it's a bit more aggressive, a bit more region, still very low amount. Doesn't come to full stop, so it's not a one pedal driving mode. Let's put it back into standard and see. This is the highest rate of region, recuperation. It's a lot more aggressive than the than low mode, but it's still not as aggressive as in my Tesla Model Y it's still not a one pedal driving i know i'm always talking about one pedal driving but i mean after you have got used to one pedal driving it's an important thing to have it's very convenient and an easy way to drive would have been great if they had a higher level than standard called high or something to add even more region i don't know if that's possible when it comes to the hardware but it will definitely help you to avoid using the brakes as much when you drive it in standard so it is a silent car acoustic glass double double paned windows both in the front and at the back so all four windows are acoustic glass it is a comfortable drive if you want this car and if you like this car you should really have a luxury comfortable sedan in mind everything is adjusted towards comfort and I think Neo really has nailed it because it is a nice car to drive around in. The steering feels nice, even if it's a bit dull. You don't get that much of a contact with the road. It feels a bit artificial, but that only matters 
if you want some performance driving. That's my review of this car, the Niu ET7 with the big 100 kilowatt hours battery pack. It is an expensive car, but it is also a luxury, comfortable car where you, you really can drive long trips in, really take advantage of the, the battery swapping stations on longer trips. Currently, there is only two stations in Sweden. More is coming though. It is a great concept and you will probably save some time compared to fast charging at least in the next couple of years before the battery chemistry and the chargers comes to a capacity that's uh, higher than today and you will probably see the difference when traveling longer trips and when I say longer trips I mean trips above 500 kilometers uh, trips where you want and need to charge more than once then this uh, battery swap technology will really excel and surpass the quick charging and performance on other cars it's a really exciting brand so if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel it will really help me to create even more content like this for you just a reminder after this video i will actually release another video with this car and that's about real world noise, acceleration, consumption and range. So stay tuned for that one. As always, don't forget to stay electric. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.